let me show you the the strongest numbers that I wanted to show you originally that are encouraging the 6-4 and I also want to apologize for the video the, the encouragement video the last one that I put up I put it up at like 2 o'clock this morning so I, okay hang on my computer's reloading okay so what I was saying was I apologize I, I know I sounded tired and I didn't go back and listen to it so, Darla said I sounded like I was really out of it so I, I apologize if I didn't make any sense or I was I don't I hate to say babbling but I probably was anyway uh, strong number 64 because it's the opposite of 46 because as I said some people in other parts of the world put the day first and then the month so I thought for their sakes because I don't want to leave them out I said well let me look at number 64 and see what it means <laughs> you're not gonna believe this okay first of all it means to catch <laughs> to take by hunting take by hunting means to seize by force which is what where the word rapture comes from um, a raptor is a bird of prey and the word raptor means to seize by force take by hunting birds of prey or hunters um, to catch take by hunting but it, it gets it gets better hang on um, to catch properly wild animals or fishes and when I saw that I was like oh my gosh the 153 and it, it is that so um, and here in Luke 2020 Two two often denotes to ensnare in toils of love, captivate. You know, think Song of Solomon. Entrap, catch, to hunt, i.e., figuratively, to entrap, to catch. And I can't remember if it was the root word agra that I it talks about the one. Hang on, let me check. Yes, it was the root word agra which is the root word of the um, word um, sorry <laughs> for the Strong's number 64 which what was it? I don't even remember oh good grief thank you guys for okay hang on let me find it I hit the wrong back button <laughs> uh, Strong's number 64 is agri agruo 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 and so when you click on Agra, it's hunting or a catch. A catch. And here it is. Here it is. It's talking about where he tells them to put their net down on the right side. It's about the 153 fish, the fullness of the Gentiles. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, the thing caught. The catch or haul of fish. The fish is taken. <laughs> Guys, do you see this? I mean, this... He's so awesome. Oops, oh, sorry. Hang on. I'm getting, <laughs> getting excited and not paying attention. Okay, actually, it's not about the the one, the the big catch of the... Um, the fish, the multitude of fish that are uh, mentioned. And I believe it's John chapter 21. But because this is when he first calls them but it's the same thing when he this is when he first calls them and when you read this it's the same thing that happened in John chapter 21 which was after he had resurrected and they went back to fishing because they didn't know what else to do and he yells out to him have you caught anything and they said no he says throw your net on the right side he's saying the same thing here so it pretty much is uh, let's see, verse 4. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Here's the word. Agra means a catch. And Simon answering him, This is Peter. Um, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. This is the pretty much the same thing. It's the same thing that happened in John chapter 21. 
I thought it was chapter 21. I'm pretty sure it is. Now I have to see what this says. <laughs> 35 through 42. And again, the next day John stood and looking upon Jesus, he walked and said, I just heard him speak and they followed Jesus and saw the boy. Okay, now this is about um, uh, when um, John the Baptist sees him and says, Behold the Lamb of God. So no, but it's in John chapter 21 about the, the net and the 153 fish. So, let's go back. Okay, so I just had to show it, John chapter 21. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus, so they're out fishing. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? In other words, did you catch anything? They answered him, No. Same thing that we just read where that was the beginning when he was walking down the beach and he called John and James and Peter because they were fishermen that's when he first called them he, this, he said the same thing to him that he did here and he said unto them cast it on the right side of the ship and ye shall find and they cast therefore and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loves him to... Okay, so I just had to show it's the same thing. Okay, so let's go back to the Strongs. So we saw what it means in the Greek, so let's check the Hebrew. Okay, and in the Hebrew it's Abel Kiramim. And of course we would say Abel, as in Cain's brother. And when you first look at it, it just says a place in Ammon. But when you research further, of course, um, Abel or Abel is how it's pronounced in Hebrew. Means meadow. Um, as in green pastures. <laughs> And it actually means part of a place. Okay, it actually means vineyard. Where is that? I think it's on the on the first page. So it could be an acacia meadow, a vineyard meadow, a dance meadow. Um, which reminds me of where is that? might be in Kings where the tribe of Benjamin was allowed to go out to where the maidens were dancing to get themselves a bride after the children of Israel vowed to not let their sons marry Benjamin's daughters because separated from each other anyway um, it's a plain meaning to be grassy green a meadow plain. So I was like, wow. You can't, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So, okay, so remember the whole word is Abel Karamim. So when you look up the root of Karamim, it's Karam, and it means a vineyard. And we know that Yeshua is the husbandman of the vineyard. He, we are the vineyard that he has planted. And let's see. Go through here. Um, apparently, it also means noble. The vine. He's the vine where the branches. Figurative Shulamite's complexion from Song of Solomon. The bride is the Shulamite. Uh, begin to use the fruit of. That's when the tree is mature, which is the fifth year. You can use the fruit of a fruit tree that you planted. That has to do with Tub Shavat. Gather, harvest, <laughs> literally cut off, i.e. grapes. Glean, eat fruit of. Locust, devour. I mean, I mean, just, you just, just can't make this stuff up. So, 
I think that's it, guys. I just wanted to encourage you with these Strong's numbers because he they're always a blessing whenever I look them up, and, and so I have to share. So, um, I pray that this has blessed you. I, to Doe and I were talking, and perhaps tomorrow the 3rd, or um, Sister Colleen in Australia and other places where it's already the 3rd, um, perhaps the third is, is our three day warning. You know, the people, the children of Israel, when they were at Mount Sinai, Moses told them, be ready against the third day. In other words, he gave them a three day heads up to prepare themselves to meet the Lord God. However, they couldn't bear being in his presence. So, uh, those who hadn't been anointed. So, um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know. Don't know if anything's gonna, you know, tomorrow might not be anything happening. Maybe this is the warning right now. And he will make sure that all those with eyes to see and ears to hear will be ready tomorrow. for, you know, the three-day warning alert for something possibly happening on the 6th. And it could be just something in from the spiritual realm that only those of us with eyes to see or ears to hear will perceive, and others won't see it, but we will. Or it could be something that we, that everybody will see. I don't know. But, um, like I said, these next couple weeks are high watch period. So just be ready no matter what. So that's all I wanted to say. I'll, st I'll stop, um, I, you know, I feel like I'm behind on stuff because I'm <laughs> putting videos up. But that's okay because that's why I do this. I want to encourage you guys. So I love you. Be blessed. And hopefully we will see each other very soon with our Savior, our Bridegroom. Hallelujah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe. Hallelujah. I love you guys. We're going home. Time to fly. Get ready. Shalom. <laughs>